Well, hey, too, it's Semi Gardener, and I have a very exciting episode planned for you guys today. Behind uh, this kind of green barrier, here is a ton of home remedies, and it's just basic things you can get around your house. And basically, what I wanted to do is do a very fun episode of things that you can find right around your house that you probably have laying around that you bought a while ago, you might use every day, you might use once a month, but nonetheless they are things that you can use to help you out in the garden. And that's what I want to do today, so I have a, uh, I have a, a bin, or it's a clothes basket, that's what it is, it's a clothes basket filled with home remedies, and I'm going to walk you guys through it, give you guys different combinations, so if you guys want to grab a pen and a piece of paper, that'd be awesome. And you guys can write down the things that apply to you and just uh, take note of the things that you don't really need. Um, but you might need them in the future. So don't forget or just come back to this video and I'll be here. I'll, I'm not going anywhere, don't you worry. Um, <laughs> so anyways, I want to start this because it's going to take a while. But um, feel free to skip through the episode. I definitely understand if it gets a little bit boring. But if you don't want to skip through, uh, pop a squat, grab a ice cold beverage and um, a pad of paper and pencil. So you're going to for you're going to first kind of want to analyze the first the issues that you have, um, and that's going to kind of help you out in this episode a little bit more because it's going to allow you to pick the ones that you could really use right away. And that is the the best part about this is that. Um, you can go right down to your pantry or your cupboards or whatever, raid them of this stuff, and you're ready to go. No need to run to the store, no need to spend any extra money, and uh, they're quick and simple too. They're very, very simple. And while some of them might not be the most organic, um, they still work. So whatever your gardening method is, there is organic and inorganic in this little bin of goodies. So the first thing I'm going to start out with is just, uh, I'm just going to start running through um, certain things, and I'm going to put certain things with certain things to help with certain problems, and you'll see what I mean in a second. First off is your pretty basic hydrogen peroxide. Now, hydrogen peroxide, a lot of times, hydrogen peroxide, sorry, a lot of times you'll use it for cuts. If you want to uh, kind of sterilize an area or anything, you will uh, put it on like a rag or a little cotton swab, and you'll clean a cut or something with it. Uh, hydrogen peroxide is super, super great. It's also 100% organic. It's one of the only uh, organic products you'll find that is uh, not really organic. It's totally safe to use. You can use it on all your plants and there's no uh, harmful, harmful chemicals at all. And the reason why that is is because, uh, for instance, one of the uses you'd use this for is for sterilizing soil. If you bring in soil from outdoors, a lot of times there's gonna be a lot of pests, a lot of bugs inside of it, and you don't want those inside. Um, another thing you wanna do is if you have some potting soil that you get from the store, a lot of people say throw it in the oven. That works, but really, I have kind of an issue with throwing soil in a place where you pre prepare food. It just kind of turns my stomach a little bit, and I know a lot of other people agree with me. So one thing you can do is mix up two tablespoons of this to, uh, two tablespoons of this to uh, four cups of water, and you can do the math on whatever that is per gallon, I have no clue, um, but uh, basically it is, uh, it's going to really quickly turn into oxygen, and, uh, and then it just turns into oxygen and water. So there's no, there's no residual chemicals left over. As soon as it touches the soil, you're just gonna put in some water, mix it around so it's diluted. You don't need the full, the full strength of it. And this is uh, 3%. This is 3% hydrogen peroxide. Mix it, uh, I've, I've, the strongest I've ever used it is a one to four ratio, but two tablespoons per four, for four cups of water works totally fine. You mix it in with the water, and then you can either just drench the soil, or you can, um, or what you can do is you can spray it and then mix it or whatever. Just you know, but what it does is it kills anything in the soil, any bacteria, any fungus, anything, and it kills it really, really quickly. And then it just uh, the oxygen goes into the air, and you can gladly breathe it and feel happy. Or um, you know, it just converts to water as well, so it's very, very harmless. 
Um, another thing you can do with hydrogen peroxide, one more use, is you can actually sterilize your seeds. When a lot of t uh, a lot of people, like me for instance on, on the microgarden channel, when I get seeds in from foreign countries, the first thing I always do is I take a little cup of hydrogen peroxide, I dilute it uh, one to four, because you want it pretty strong, and what I do is I actually just, I drop the seeds right in the little solution of hydrogen peroxide, and that'll kill anything else that'll be in your soil, because trust me, if it comes from a foreign country, the reason why it's uh, an exotic species is because it doesn't grow here, and uh, a lot of times you'll get exotic, other exotic species, if you know what I mean, and uh, I don't think people would like that too much if you brought something over here from a different country. So, um, you know, it's just uh, safety measures, and also I don't think you'd want that in your garden at all either. So, just a way to um, sterilize seeds. It works out really, really great. So, hydrogen peroxide. Next one, coffee. Extremely simple. You probably a lot of people have it laying around the house. I know I do. I love a cup of coffee in the morning. But one thing you can do is you can actually take the coffee grounds after you make your coffee. Take the coffee grounds, either put it in your compost pile for a really uh, good nitrogen addition, or what you can do is you can actually sprinkle it around your plants, and that will add a really quick nitrogen boost as well. Now let's say you make your cup of coffee and you made too much, um, or you didn't feel like being caffeinated, and so you just let it get cold and nasty. Everyone knows that nuked coffee tastes disgusting, so what you can do is you, actually, you can actually take the cold coffee Pour it around some of your acid-loving plants like blueberries. Uh, for instance, on the microgarden channel, I use it for my miracle my miracle berries, um, some of my citruses, and um, there's a, there's a couple others. But either way, uh, plants that love uh, acidic soil will really benefit from some from some coffee. So you can definitely do this. There's a ton and ton of uses for for coffee grounds. Moving on. All right. Next is Milk. Uh, this is just regular 2% milk. Any type of milk will work. What you do is you can mix one cup of milk to five cups of water, so one to five ratio. And so if you have one gallon of milk, that makes five gallon, that would, you'd mix that with five gallons of water. And what you do is you'd spray your plants. Now the milk will actually work as a fungicide and it's worked, it also has calcium in it. So if you spray it in your tomatoes, it's gonna help with calcium, or it's gonna help with blossom end rot. And um, so that is milk. It's really, really effective. It's worked for me, I've used it, and it's obviously in almost every house, unless you're lactose intolerant. All right, moving on to another fungicide. Cornmeal. This is just your regular, uh, it's, it's a non-bleached cornmeal, so it's just basically like what you'd get, uh, just, uh, just yellow cornmeal. And cornmeal is super great. What you do is you just let it set in water. Um, I typically, I mean, the, everyone has something different to say about it, but what I actually do is I will add uh, two cups of cornmeal to one gallon of water, and I will let it just sit there. I'll stir it up every once in a while, and let it set, stir it, set. I let it set for about a day after stirring, you know, every every couple hours or so, just to mix it up. And then what you do is you take a paint strainer, and just, or a sock, or a stocking, or something, and strain out the cornmeal, so you have just the water. It's gonna look kind of milky and, and uh, whatnot. And that has the starch from the corn in it from the cornmeal. And what you do is you spray that on your plants and uh, blights on tomatoes. What it does is it makes an environment that the, that the fungus can't land on because the pH of the leaf has been changed. Not enough to kill the plant, but uh, too extreme that the fungus can't survive on it. And that is really, really important if you're going all organically. Uh, there's a lot of sprays out there, but it's by far I think one of the most effective uh, fungicides out there. I mean, there's some other ones I'll get into, but um, again, for just a simple, easy one, cornmeal, really great. Next one, molasses. Now, molasses has a ton of uses. So one of the ways that I use my molasses is you can get either powdered or you can get the liquid form. And if you get the liquid form, make sure it's unsulfured molasses. 
Now, the thing about molasses is it is a sugar source. Really, really key if you're making compost tea. What you do is you just add about two tablespoons of liquid molasses, or uh, what I use is just two tablespoons of the powdered molasses, either way it's gonna work, to about two to three gallons of water. It really doesn't matter that much, but, um, but it will feed the microorganisms in the compost tea. Another thing you can do is you can actually mix up some, uh, some of the powdered molasses, or in this case, liquid molasses too will work, uh, and I actually will spray it, I will add it with water, and I will spray it on my soil in the springtime. And that will feed all the microorganisms in the soil as well. It feeds them. So that's what that is used for. And it's very, very effective. It's, it's amazing stuff. And I've seen totally impressive results with something that probably everyone has around their house. Another thing that is really, really great, baking soda. Now, baking soda is sodium bicarbonate. And that means it's slightly alkaline and alkaline is a little bit higher on the pH scale. Uh, if you look at seven, which is basically water, water has a pH of seven, it's neutral. Um, and any lower than seven is acidic, any higher than seven is alkaline. And so what you would do is you add two, uh, one to two tablespoons, depending on your, your strength, how potent you want it, uh, two tablespoons of the baking soda to one gallon of water, and you're going to want to add one to two tablespoons, um, depending, coordinating with uh, the baking soda, obviously, you're going to want to add um, a one to one ratio of this to one gallon of water. So um, one tablespoon, one tablespoon to one gallon of water, or two tablespoons and two tablespoons to one gallon of water, depending on how strong you want the solution to be. And that is going to obviously change the, the, the pH level of the leaf to make it a little bit more extreme on the alkaline scale to where uh, the, the funguses can't grow and they therefore will die. Great, great, I've used it so many times and it really, really works. So another thing is thyme, thyme leaves. Thyme leaves are an insanely good uh, fungicide, one of, the strongest in, one of the strongest in the entire world. You can actually, what you wanna do is you want to take some thyme leaves. Uh, pretty much everyone can get them from any uh, any store that has an herb aisle or a seasoning aisle, and pretty much a lot of people probably have them in their in their pantry. And what you do is you just take some uh, hot water with just a tad bit of soap, dish soap, and what you're going to do is you're going to soak the leaves in in the water overnight. And what I actually do is I will actually add two, uh, two teaspoons of thyme leaves, crushed thyme leaves, to um, one gallon of water. And then when you spray that on the leaves, it will just, it will wipe out any, any chance of any funguses landing on, on the leaves. So that is great there. That is thyme. Next thing is hot sauce. This uh, is just your average Tabasco sauce, and I, I mean, I have it. I don't know if most people probably have it somewhere in their house or have had it, but it's a pretty common household ingredient, let's say. And what you can do is you can actually mix four tablespoons of this to one gallon of water, and you can actually spray it on your plants, a hot pepper spray. It will kill pretty much any insect around pretty quickly because it's an irritant. And when it gets on their skin, uh, much like it gets in your eyes or it makes your mouth burn, um, it, will, it will harm the, the insects. Now make sure, obviously this is just a warning, warning, do not spray it where honeybees will be active. So you want to spray it more near the end of the night. You don't want to spray it when honeybees are going to be active because if you spray a honeybee, it's going to kill the honeybees. That is just a warning. It's a little risk, but it does work. It works really well. It works on aphids, works on spider mites, uh, uh, you know, the, the little flea beetles. I mean, man, just 
so many pests in the garden can be taken care of with the hot pepper spray. So remember, uh, four tablespoons to one gallon of water, problem solved. Another thing you want to do is if you need uh, acid for your plants, uh, you can actually add lemon juice. Now lemon juice is on the other side of the scale where baking soda was actually the alkaline scale, the uh, lemon juice is actually the acid scale. Now you can make an insecticide with this and you can also make a fungicide with it but what I actually use it for is I'll actually uh, if I need something with acidic soil and I don't have some cold coffee laying around uh, it has pretty much the exact same results. What you want to do is add three tablespoons to about half a gallon of water, you know, three quarters of a gallon of water works fine too, but um, the uh, optimal pH is going to be is going to be found if you add it to about half a gallon of water. And next, next thing, next, um, what do I want here? Uh, vinegar. Let's do vinegar. Vinegar is has to be in every house. If you don't get some, it's like the most common household ingredient out there. And vinegar, any type of vinegar works great. I choose to use apple cider vinegar because it's a little less potent smelling, a little bit, uh, a little bit sweeter on the nose. And what you can do is endless with this. First thing, fungicide has the exact same effects as, uh, let's say, the lemon juice, and it has the same effect as uh, the baking soda, except for the other scale. This is acidic. The apple cider vinegar will, uh, you mix uh, two tablespoons to one gallon of water and you spray it on your plants. You can go up to four tablespoons per one gallon of water. Just be careful not to go a little bit higher because you might burn your plants. Um, also, what I was going to say is when you're applying stuff to leaves, any home ingredients, no matter if they're inorganic or organic, you need to be careful when to apply them. Never apply them in the heat of the day, ever, ever, because the sun is just way too intense and you'll find that it actually will burn your plant. No matter how, uh, how home remedy-ish it is. And so uh, with that out of the way, yes, you can use vinegar as a fungicide and that works great on blights and stuff same way that the baking soda does. So uh, you can use two to four tablespoons of uh, apple cider vinegar or vinegar of your choice to one gallon of water, spray it on the leaves, and you should be set. Another thing you can do is you can actually use it as an insecticide. Insects hate vinegar. And what you can actually do is mix it up the exact same way as you would a fungicide. You mix up I typically will do it a little bit stronger. I use four tablespoons to one gallon of water and I will drench the soil and that works great on fungus gnats and nematodes. Uh, nematodes are good outside but if you have them inside they can become a very big problem if left unchecked so you don't want them in your soil. So what I do is I root drench with a four to one ratio. Now note, also note, this will lower your pH. This is acidic. So make sure, make sure that your plants can handle acidic soil before applying this. For instance, my citruses and my miracle berries, those things that I add the coffee to, the cold coffee, will handle this as well. So if I apply this in a root drench, I typically will wait about a week or two before I add some more acidic stuff to the soil so I don't over acidify, obviously. Another thing, this is going to be a combination here, soap, vegetable oil, and uh, where is this, um, baking soda. You can make a, uh, you can make another type of uh, fungicide and insecticide using these materials. Now the soap helps the, uh, it helps mix the oil with the water and because if you've ever noticed if you pour oil and water they don't really mix too well so what you do is you add just a couple drops just a couple drops of the soap you can use an insecticidal soap 
but we're going home remedy here. So what I use is just a, uh, it's just a all natural soap and it's just a regular dish soap, whatever. And it works out really, really great if you just do about two to three drops per gallon of water, two to ta uh, one to two tablespoons per gallon with, um, with the vegetable oil and one to two tablespoons with the baking soda. Next is actually, oh, next I might as well continue with the soap. Uh, with the soap, you can also do a insecticide and a bee spray with just soap. Bees and other insects uh, that have a, a hard shell such as grasshoppers and certain beetles, certain, um, certain uh, caterpillars, and mostly wasps, um, they, they can be beneficial in the garden, yes, they can be beneficial, but they can also be kind of dangerous too if they get out of hand. So what you can actually do is take some hot water, hot, like you can't really touch it with your hand hot, and then you want to take soap. I typically will use about one teaspoon to two teaspoons per gallon of water, hot water, put it in a sprayer, and I will spray, if I want to kill bees, uh, I'll spray it on the, around the bees, in the bees nest, um, but keep in mind this is only if you want to kill them. Jeez, like, don't, <laughs> don't think I'm like some, some crazy maniac that just goes killing bees. It's only if, like, for instance, around the house, um, if it's not even in the garden. If it's just around the house and I don't want the mailman getting stung to death, I'll take him out with that. And that works great because ants and stuff like that, they breathe through their skin. They don't have lungs. And so they can't really breathe in and breathe out. They actually breathe through their skin. So what you do is you put one to two teaspoons of, um, <clears throat> of soap with one gallon of water, hot water. Spray it on the insects and when they breathe in it'll actually suffocate them and they are no more. So it's a little bit of a violent one, but uh, it works and it's worked great for me. Another thing, garlic. Garlic is a beautiful thing. There, I mean, I could write a book on the amount of uses for garlic. Garlic, what you can do is you can make an insecticide, mince it up in a little, like a food processor, and you can actually mix it with some water, mix uh, two cloves of garlic and two tablespoons of Tabasco hot sauce to one gallon of water. You can drench the soil, that'll uh, kill off any nasties in the soil. You can also spray it on your plants as a insecticide and they really, really don't like it because it's a good irritant. Also, if you have any vampires in your garden, works too. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Um, no, but uh, deer, deer and rabbits hate minced garlic. You put it around the base of your plant, you will not have a problem. Uh, I had the worst deer problems ever. And you can pretty much get minced garlic anywhere. You can get the dried stuff, or you can mince your own, just buy your own clove. I find it's a little bit cheaper to buy the just the pre-minced stuff in the big, the big old containers. A couple shakes around each plant, not a problem. Gone. So, another thing, baking powder. Uh, it's different than baking soda. Baking powder actually has calcium bicarbonate, and calcium bicarbonate is, it's a little bit alkaline, but it actually works really, really well if you have blossom end rot. What you can do is, similar to the fungicide that you made with the baking soda, two tablespoons per one gallon of water, spray it on your plants, and it, the, the plants, the leaves, will absorb the baking powder through, yeah, baking powder. I almost said baking soda, but baking powder. It'll absorb the baking powder through the leaves and that will help with blossom end rot. But baking powder is actually more of a lighter version of a fungicide than the baking soda is. And that's because baking soda has a stronger alkaline material in it. They're both alkaline, they'll both work, but I choose to actually use it for blossom end rot and that works out really, really well. Next, Cinnamon. This is just a little jar of cinnamon here. And, uh, and cinnamon is actually 
really good for a fungicide and an insecticide. Now, it doesn't really kill the insects, but if you have houseplants, what you can do is, if you can get enough of it, it's a little bit expensive, but um, so it's an okay route to take, I guess. Um, I've used it, and it works just doesn't work really fast, but it does work. So if you have patience and you got time, use uh, just some cinnamon, and you want to cover the soil around the plants, and that will prevent any fungus gnats from actually burrowing into the soil, because cinnamon is really, really irritating. Um, not irritating to you, but uh, irritating to bugs because of the way it is. It's really coarse, and it's got a lot of surface area, which is why um, if you pour water on it, it just beads right up. You can't, it takes so much water to mix with cinnamon because it's so water retentive. And another thing you can do is you can take your soap, <laughs> another hungry you can take your soap, two drops of this, to uh, three table or three teaspoons of cinnamon and mix that with one quart of water. And what you want to do is you want to let that set overnight and then you take a paint strainer or a sock or some really fine mesh and filter out, or what I use is a coffee filter actually, and I filter out the cinnamon, put it in a sprayer and I spray it on the leaves and it actually is a fungicide. It's a really, really strong fungicide. So that works. Another thing, chili powder. Chili powder works just about the same as the cinnamon, and it also has the combined effects of the Tabasco. What you want to do is, um, since it is an oil, uh, well, the chili powder has an oil on it, what you want to do is bring out your friend the soap. Anytime you're mixing water and a oil together, the soap is your best friend. It'll help them mix. Two drops of soap to four to five tablespoons of chili powder. Mix that in. Let it sit overnight. You can spray it in your plants as a hot pepper spray. Another thing you can do is sprinkle it on the soil. Make sure you don't breathe it in. It's really hot and it's very irritating to your lungs as well as uh, all of their insects as well. And that works just about the same way. It, oh, also, 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 almost forgot, also, also, the chili powder will also deter animals. Animals hate chili powder. Dogs and cats. If you have cats using your, your uh, raised beds as a litter box, if you have dogs taking poops around your plants, if you have deer or rabbits nibbling on your stuff, sprinkle them with chili powder. Obviously, you're, if you have fruit setting, or it's like lettuce or something, you're going to want to wash them off. Please wash them off. It'll taste terrible to you. But wash them off very well. Your animals will not touch this stuff. Works great. Last thing is honey. Honey is used for one thing for me and one thing only, and it actually is used as a rooting hormone. Now, when I take cuttings of something, if I want to cut... Uh, tomato cuttings off. What you want to do is just take a little, just a little jar like this, just unscrew it, dip your cutting right in the uh, little jar of honey, and drop it in some soil. And in no time at all, you're going to have a uh, a perfectly good rooted cutting. Another thing you can use this for, um, similar to cuttings, is if you have a gouge on a tree. Let's say a limb falls off, a limb breaks off. What you can actually do is take some honey and smear it on that gouge, and that will prevent any um, infection from getting into the into the the plant. So it's somewhat a a fungicide, but mostly what it works for really well is rooting cuttings, and that's that. All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you have any questions at all, I know it seemed probably a bit overwhelming, but if you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to send me an email. Please do not hesitate to put a comment in the comment box below. I'd be glad to answer any questions you have. And hopefully you guys learned how to use some stuff laying around the house and apply it to your garden to not only save money, but use some stuff up that might just be going to waste. And so uh, with all that said, 
Uh, I think that's just about it. Um, January 15th is the last day to send in your envelopes for free seeds. So if you haven't uh, done that already, please do. I want to get your envelopes in. I really do. Um, and that's it. Remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. This is M.I. Gardner reminding you to grow bigger, go home. And I will see you next week. All right. Catch you guys later. See ya. Bye.